This is not the first time we've had governments involved in tech uh, by any means. Going back to Midi in Japan, DARPA at the Defense Department. Uh, what have we learned from that? What should we have learned from those experiences? Well, David, I think it's, it's a great analogy that you draw. And you, you seem to be a historian of our industry. I actually was living in Japan during the memory wars. I was living in Tokyo at the time, working at IBM Japan. Now, today, things have changed, I mean, clearly, because it's not Japan who was part of the worldwide economic and governance systems. It's China. And China, as you know, uh, is fast-growing economy, investing trillions of dollars in technology. Uh, they want to lead the West. They want to be the, the worldwide leader in, in semiconductors and microelectronics. And the majority of our capacity is in Asia, and it's not exactly a stable part of the world. So it's quite different. So it's more than just government involvement and in adding stimulus to get investment in these key critical areas. You have a, they have the a geopolitics at play. So it's very complicated, much more so than it was in the past. But it doesn't always work, does it? I mean, I, I think a lot of people think that the MIDI experiment uh, over in Japan actually ultimately was not successful. Japan is not a dominant player in semiconductors today. That's correct. I mean, I would argue that the execution by government then was very poor. I, was, I used to meet with MIDI, uh, and they were stronger in electronics, and they still are strong in manufacturing electronics. But to fill in what was required from the industry's perspective, you also had to have software capability, and they were weak. So many times, I think the government doesn't understand what's required to actually uh, not just invest, but to lead, and then the discipline that's required to execute these things with precision. So, Sam, as you suggest, I mean, China really has changed the game, I think, in technology uh, in all sorts of ways. And, and given its authoritarian aspect, which means it can do pretty much whatever it wants to do, uh, as well as the massive amounts of money involved, does it make it almost essential that the United States, and for that matter, Europe also, some way step up to the bar? I think it's key. Now, I know many of my colleagues in the private sector will find that that's strange for somebody that ran IBM to say those things. But this transition is very, very expensive. And I don't think it's a, you can you could have a company, regardless of how successful they are, Intel, AMD, ASML in Europe, et cetera, do this on their own. They're taking on a sovereign nation. And when you're, and when you're taking on a sovereign nation, it's not like competing in your industry space. So there is a role for government. Now, the question is, what is the role for government? And I think we all know, we've all learned that government picking winners and losers, losers even if you're an authoritarian government like China who can act quickly, doesn't always work uh, for lots of different reasons. But I think you need to have this partnership and not have the government pick and choose who the political winners or losers happen to be based upon votes per state and all the things that they consider beyond just what it takes to make this business successful and what it takes to lead in technology in the world. So the lead in implementing this in the United States is going to be Gina Raimondo, the Secretary of Commerce. Give her a little yes. advice. I mean, we've talked to her and she says she wants to get that $53 billion out the door as soon as possible. Uh, what would you tell her to make sure that it goes to the right places in the right time? Oh, that's an excellent question. I'd start with the fact that uh, having been involved in these types of programs in the past, the application process to get approval to proceed is extremely onerous and very complicated. And many times people just give up. Uh, there, a lot of this went on in, in the electric uh, modernization or digitization of the grids when I was working. And the, the, the government processes are so cumbersome, people just said it's not worth it to heck with it, you know, those kinds of things. In this case, it's permitting that's required and location that's required. Now, the good news in this, quite honestly, is the states are heavily involved, like Ohio, and the states are much better at getting these things done, in my opinion, than the federal government is. So that's just based on my experience. So that's the positive side of this thing. But she, you need to get the bureaucracy out of the way. Uh, you know, it's the same thing they did with the vaccines. You got to get the bureaucracy out of the way so you can move very, very quickly. Now, the other piece of this, quite honestly, I, I'd advise her on is you have to look beyond just production capacity. I know that's the bill. That's where the money is. But the issue is more complex uh, than just the lo locating the fabricators. If you look back in history, the U.S. government does not have an unblemished record when it comes to waste when you're putting a lot of money out in the marketplace. And yes, even fraud. How do you get the bureaucracy out of the way, but at the same time make sure the money's going to the right places and the right people and not being wasted, or for that matter, fraud isn't being conducted? Well, I, quite honestly, David, I'd start by getting competent people involved. And what do I mean by that? There are people in this industry that know how to do these things. 
I mean, I'm not volunteering for work, don't misunderstand me. <laughs> I'm really not. However, there are people, engage the people who know how to get these things done. Government, for whatever sets of reasons, goes on their own. And that is a problem because in these very complicated areas, you need people who have done this before, who have the expertise, and you need to engage them. Uh, if they're turning it over completely to the government agencies without a partnership of some kind with able, capable people, I think will be a mistake. I've argued this for years when we were in the Obama Commission when it came to cybersecurity and the government network infrastructure. You need to get people involved that know how this stuff works. However, having said that, my experience is government in the U.S., clearly in the United States, is very hesitant to do that. I cannot explain why. Uh, I just know they're hesitant to use the private sector expertise. Finally, Sam, to take a, a step back here a moment, we talked about China, we talked about some of the geopolitics involved in, in semiconductors. There are a lot of, larger set of issues now in geopolitics around the world. You don't need me to tell you whether it's Russia and Ukraine, whether it's Taiwan and China, whether it's Iran, everywhere you look. As a former CEO of a very large global company, uh, how does it change how you make your investment decisions, what you're seeing geopolitically right now? Well, I mean, David, quite honestly, it makes it much more complicated. I mean, if you think about it, there was a system before the world globally integrated called the hub and spoke. And by that, I mean, you maintain manufacturing, your R&D and IP and your domiciled headquarters locations, and you sold things into other countries. Today, as you look at where your facilities are, would you make an asset, it's a multi-billion dollar investment in an asset, a manufacturing facility or a data center, whatever that would happen to be, in parts of the world that are unstable? Of course not. Would you do that when there's not a predictable government? Of course not. I mean, basically, so that's what has to change. Now, the question is, where do you go? And then you need stable environments where you have trusted governments that you know they'll be reliable and predictable, that you can make these long-term investments. Now, there's a lot of those locations in the world, by the way, uh, but for fundamentally, that's what you need to do. Now, from a government's perspective, I don't really think it's practical to say everything returns to your domicile, whoever you are, U.S., Germany, it doesn't matter, France. That's not practical because the capabilities you need in technology in the world, no one geography has total, total end-to-end -to -end capability to lead. They need to collaborate. They need to partner together to actually get this done.